Hello, my name is Sean Kahn and it's been a pleasure for me to revisit a part I played many moons ago uh, for the wonderful Box Clever in a play called A Very Private Passion. I play a character called Swerve and in this scene he's visiting his mum, talking about his dad and other important things in his life. Enjoy. My mum. She's not mummy, because that's soppy. She's a mother. I mean, there's not any other I'd turn to when times get sticky, when things get a little tricky. I mean, that's what mums are for. Not the ironing, washing and feeding, because mums know best. Not just the ironing, washing and feeding. But they're there when you want them to be there. And no matter what you've done, they don't care if it's right or wrong. Mums are there with arms open wide like the robber I've tunnel on a good day. I remember when I was a kid, we put bangers through this letterbox. We never told you what we did because we knew you wouldn't like it. That time when that geezer had a go, and he had no right to have a go. Because all I did was scare the cat, not kill the cat or hang it upside down from an old oak tree in Kennington Park. You wouldn't stand for it. You gave them a mouthful. Don't you go shout at my boy. If you got a shout, shout at me. Yeah, you was good. I was proud of you, Mum. I mean, I was. You're crap at making cakes and doing all the usual stuff that mums are supposed to do. When I saw you there facing up to that bloke, I was really proud of you, mum. No thanks, mum. I don't want no tea. Most people got eight pints of blood. You got a gallon of PG. Sorry I ain't been round for ages, mum. No, it's like one thing after another. Yeah, it has been a long time. Yeah, too long. Saw the old man the other day. That's what I come to say. Pathetic. Staggering along, knees up to his chin. Disgusting. Surprised they still let him in. Thought the hostel had a dress code, their standards must be slipping. I stopped. Not for a chat, no point in that. You wouldn't know who I was. But I stopped to look at and to see if it was pity or something like pity that would well up inside me. Like a chicken vindaloo after an all-nighter at the Tower Bridge Tandoori. It wasn't pity. It was hate. Real hate. I stood there staring and my body got all tensed up, steel springed. My hands became fists and my boots begged to be set free. All right, mate, he said. Fancy a pint of London pride, he said. Ironic, isn't it, I thought. Him asking for a pint of pride. Standing here in baggy trousers with wee-wee stains down the inside. You ain't got a couple of bob on you, mate, he said. Bob's your uncle, I said. Hey, he said. You remember your uncle Bob? Used to run the dredger from Shadwell to Shetby. The old man looked a bit perplexed. You could hear the half dozen remaining brain cells, half asleep and half pissed, wind up the old electric motor to get the old memory banks going. Uncle Bob, he said, pretending to remember. And your brother? Burlington Bertie from Bromley by Bow. You remember him, don't you? He was looking at me like the sun was shining in his eyes. I was right up close like I was going to kiss him. 
I was almost shouting like to make myself heard above the traffic. Except there was no traffic. It was a quiet cul-de-sac. Nobody about. Except a mangy old cat well past its sell-by date. Bertie! I screamed. Bertie! He echoed me like he was a kid back at school. Who knows, if he didn't get it right, he's going to get it right across the chops. You must remember Bertie. He's your brother. Everybody who's got a brother remembers their brothers. Yeah. Yeah. The old git fumbled with my lapel. As if he was trying to clean it or straighten it. Too late for all that now, I thought. Don't daddy me now. Don't want all that daddy stuff now. Anyway. He stank. I didn't want stink on my clothes. I was going out. Not nice, is it? You know, when you're chatting someone up and there's this whiff. What's that? She says. That's my eau de toilette. Good to see you smile, mum. I never see you smile. Yeah, I know. If I came round more, you don't have to go on about it. You do go on about it. Every time I see you, you go on about it. And when we do see each other, we spend half the time talking about that I haven't seen you more instead of talking about what's important. Lots of things are important. But what I'm thinking, what you're thinking, but what I'm feeling, but when I'm scared. You know me, Mum, I don't get scared. I can handle myself, always could. I've been on the tube, on the Jubilee, when a load of Millwall chased me. Wasn't scared then. Had a big grin on my chin. Till I got to Brixton and got done for not having a ticket. It's not the same thing. Not what I mean. I want to be little. Like a little baby. Crawl into your arms so you can hug me and keep me from the wicked wind of the West Pier that travels up the Thames on a chariot of fire that strips me bare and pinned to the wall like a snatch squad from the Met. Keeps me safe and sound. I'm not feeling so alone. So totally on my own. I wanted to hug him, Mum. I did. I wanted to hug him like I never did when I was a kid. And at the same time, I wanted to hit him. Hard. Two feelings like prize fighters fighting the wind. To hug him or to hit him. To hug him or to hit him. In the end I lifted him. Carried him like a baby, fast asleep. Back to the hostel and tucked him up in bed. Thought of telling him a good night story. You know, the one about the rabbit. But he wouldn't have heard me above the snoring. <laughs>